Okay, today we come to Second Chronicles, chapter 5. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 1. When all the work Solomon had done for the temple of the Lord was finished, he brought in the things his father David had dedicated, the silver and gold, and all the furnishings, and he placed them in the treasuries of God's temple. And it took seven years to build this temple. In verse 2, Then Solomon summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, and the chiefs of the Israelite families, to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from Zion, the city of David. The ark will be moved from the tent that it had been in to the holy temple. The tent was in Jerusalem, and the temple will be in Jerusalem. So evidently it has to be moved across town, or I don't know the exact distance. But dignitaries from all over Israel are there to witness it. Verse 3, And all the men of Israel came together to the king at the time of the festival in the seventh month. All them... You know, all those men referred to here in verse 3, they are representatives, and not all the men, you know, from all over Israel. They're just representatives from all over Israel. Verse 4, when all the elders of Israel had arrived, the Levites took up the ark. David learned the hard way that if you're going to move the holy ark, then you better do it God's way. That means the Levites have to carry it using poles. You know, remember the story? When David had that ark moved on a, on a new cart and it started to slip, and Uzzah reached out to steady it and he was struck dead, David learned a hard lesson, not to mention Uzzah. And so David understood that if that thing was going to be moved, the Levites have to carry it using poles. And David passed that information on to Solomon. And you know, that, that brings up a good lesson here. Part of being a parent is teaching a child not to make the same mistakes that you did. Verse 5. It says, And they brought up the ark and the tent of meeting and all the sacred furnishings in it. The priests who were Levites carried them up, and King Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and cattle that they could not be recorded or counted. And these sacrifices were a show of devotion to the, or by the king, I should say, a devotion to God by the king and by the others who brought them to the priest to offer them to God. And, of course, the priests are the ones who had to do the actual sacrificing. The offerings came from the king and the people. The sacrificing was done according to the law of God by the priests only. Verse 7. The priests then brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The Ark, symbolizing God's throne, was placed in the Holy of Holies, that inner room, and it was placed between two golden angels, which had their wings spread out over the, over the top of the ark. And you know what's neat about this? It actually portrays the scene in heaven where angels surround the throne of God. Verse 8, The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and covered the ark, and its carrying poles. The carrying poles stayed in the rings of the ark. Verse 9. These poles were so long that their ends extending from the ark could be seen from in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place, and they are still there today. There, is, there was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. Okay, originally, the ark contained a golden pot with manna, 
Remember the manna that God sent to the Israelites every day for 40 years while they were in the wilderness? God says he put some of that in a golden pot and put it in the ark as a testimony to what I did for you. So it was a golden pot. It contained manna. Also, Aaron's staff was in that ark as well, along with the two stone tablets containing the Ten Commandments. Well, I don't know if you remember, but way back when we were studying Samuel, the ark had been captured by the Philistines. And they apparently took the staff and the gold pot because they were worth something to them. They probably threw the manna on the ground, you know, but they took the golden pot and they took the walking staff. They also left the tablets with God's word written on them in the ark. And I suppose, you know, what's this? Scribbling. All it is is Ten Commandments. What do we need this for? I suppose that was their attitude. So they just left it be. It wasn't worth anything to them. And you know what? The Word of God is still viewed as worthless to those who do not know the Lord. Verse 11. The priests then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regardless of their divisions. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, Juthun, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. The trumpets and singers joined in unison as with one voice they give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. The subject of their praise and worship, God is good, and God's mercy lasts forever. God's people who know him and serve him know that he is good. You know, God is often misrepresented as being mean, full of hate. He is not. God's people know that. If they know him, they know that. And they also reject and the accusation that he isn't good. And God's people also know about his mercy. They would not be his people without his mercy. <clears throat> 13, the last part of it. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. Remember the cloud that traveled with Israel from Egypt to the Promised Land that guided them through the wilderness? Remember that cloud? That was a manifestation of God's presence. And here it is again. This time, it's in the temple. It was God's way of saying, I'm pleased and I'm moving in. And you can meet with me in this place whenever you want to. And next time we'll pick it up in chapter 6. Until then, so long everyone.